All right, so now we're on to the very final project before the full stack, and that's the anonymous message board project. And to get started with this, you just want to open up this repository link on GitHub and just click code and then grab the HTTPS URL right here. And in REPL, just click the plus button in the top right corner, click import from GitHub and just paste in your link right there and then click import. And that will basically download the project from GitHub into our REPL so it's ready to use. Now this project is pretty difficult and I think it will take some time to do. So what you what it essentially is is a forum which is an, where you don't have to sign in and you can basically just create um, topics or threads and then what you can do is you can add replies to them and each time you create a thread um, or a reply you can provide a password in here and then that password will be used to delete it. There's also a reported boolean that tr keeps track of whether it's been reported or not and that can be done by pressing this button right here. So once this has been imported into Repl.it what you just want to do here is you want to run the command npm install. That will basically install in all our dependencies for us. And this can take some time to do as well. And what I'm also going to do is rename this to something like um, um, message board. I don't know, so it's something a bit more appropriate. And yeah, you just want to wait for that to install. And there are a bunch of functional tests for this as well, um, but we have to write the functional tests ourselves, so we'll be doing that as well. And what you also want to do is, if you go into um, roots, if you go into tests and then functional tests, there's like this weird code structure right here, and it just confuses me to be honest. So what I'm just going to do is basically just delete everything and just keep. Um, just the suit functional tests part right here and then we'll write in all our tests here. So um, if you run this project right here, um, the URL for the project will just be, um, it's going to run the npm install again, but it should be quicker this time because we already installed it. Um, I'll just walk you through what's in here for now. Um, style.css is just a style sheet for the index page. Then we have roots and api.js, and this is where we'll be writing in our roots for um, threads and replies. We have fcctesting.js, and um, I'm just going to reload this actually because it's being, uh, it's, yeah, I don't think it's doing anything right now. So um, in fcctesting.js, don't worry about that, that's just some uh, roots for running the tests. Once again, the tests haven't been implemented, so you can just submit anything and it will accept it. Um, and then in tests, we have unitest.js, but we're not required to fill in any unit test folders, so we're okay on that aspect. And then we have functionaltest.js, where we'll be writing our own functional test to test our roots. Then in views, we have index.html, which is the main page of our app. And this is the user won't interact with this. This is just to do with testing API routes. And um, then we have board.html, which is basically this uh, forum board right here where you can see lots of threads. And if you put any board name into here, it will basically generate a board page for that. And we also have um, thread.html, and that's when you view an individual thread along with its replies. That's that'll be this view rendered right here. And don't worry about these for now. Um, all of this is fine. And server.js basically just creates an express app, and then it basically installs body parser as well, and then it runs. Um, it, it sets up the roots of the board and thread. And also it runs this API roots function, which basically links it right here to this. So now that we have our project set up, we're ready to get started. All right, so now that we have our app working right here, the next thing we're going to be doing is setting up the database connection. And since this is a message board which contains threads and replies, we're going to have to store them somewhere. And we're going to be using MongoDB for this again. And we're also going to be using Mongoose. So what you want to do is stop the app and then in the terminal you just want to install the latest version of MongoDB and Mongoose. So just do npm install MongoDB at latest and then press enter and that will install the latest version of MongoDB into our app. And what you also want to do is go into your uh, clusters and then click on collections and you want to create a new database for this project. and just click the create database button right here and I'm just going to call it anonymous 
underscore message underscore board. You can give it any name you want as long as you remember it. And then in the collection name, just put test or something like that. We don't have to worry about the collection name here because Mongoose will handle our collection creation for us later. So you just want to create that. Um, don't know why there's two of these. Uh, what you also want to do, all right, so MongoDB's install, so just do npm install mongoose at latest as well, and that will install the latest version of mongoose. Whoops, there we go. So that will install the latest version of mongoose. And all our roots are going to be in api.js, and so are our database connections. So what you want to do here is basically um, import MongoDB and mongoose. So you want to say let MongoDB equals require and we would just want to put the package name which is mongodb like this and then we also want to import mongoose so we'll say like mongoose equals require and then just put the package name of mongoose like this and now that this is finished uh, we can just pull this terminal back down and if we look at uh, package.json we should see that the latest version of mongodb and mongoose have been installed for us so the next thing that we want to do is in api.js we want to connect to the database. So remember that this function app right here is run in server.js right here. So when, when that starts running we want to also connect to our database before we set up the roots. So what I'm going to say is create a variable to hold our connection URL and I'm just going to call this URI right here. And to get the connection URL what you want to do is just go back to clusters, click on connect and click connect your application, Node.js 3.6 or later, and you just want to copy this right here. And just paste it in like this. And for the password, what you want to do is just basically load it in from your environment variables. So you just want to say um, plus process.env.pw or whatever name you want to call your password. And to set up an environment variable for your password, what you just want to do is you want to go to your project root and then just click the add file button. And you just want to call this .env like this. And then what you want to do is just say your variable name, which is just whatever you used before. So I used PW. And then you just want to stick your database password in here. I'll put my real one in later on. What you also want to do here is replace the database name right here. And if you remember, the database that we uh, created earlier was called anonymous underscore message underscore board which is this one right here. So you just, you just want to insert the uh, database name in here as well. Like this. Okay, so now that we have our URI to connect to our database, we finally just want to connect to the database. And if you just go to the uh, Free Code Camp website and you go down a little bit to um, API and microservices and then Mongo, DB and Mongoose and install and set to Mongoose. You just want to copy this connection method right here and just paste it underneath this URI. And you just want to replace the URI, your URI part with the URI from here. And then what will happen is when the server gets started up and this function runs, um, then it will that will basically run this function. And what it does is it then uses this URI to connect to the database using Mongoose. And everything should be okay. All right, so the first test says that uh, only allow your site to be loaded in an iframe on your own pages. So this means that we need to set up some frame guard headers to do this. And we can do this using helmet. If we take a look at package.json, we should see the helmet has already been installed. So we don't need to install it ourselves. And if we look at readme.md, what it says is that uh, you will create security features in server.js. So if we go into uh, server.js, what we just want to do is mount helmets frame guard middleware to do this. So I'm just going to look that up really quickly. So if, you, if I just put in helmet frame guard or helmet uh, GitHub, if we just go to the GitHub repo for helmet and then go into uh, middleware, and then if we look at... Um, X frame options, we can see that the frame guard middleware right here. So what you want to do is mount this for all routes. So I'm going to do it um, just after body parser here. So I'll say app.use and the method is helmet.frameguard. And um, okay, well actually one thing we also want to do is require helmet here. So we'll say let helmet equals require helmet like this. 
And inside the frame guard method, we can give a configuration object with the um, options that we want. And the option that we can set is what we'll set that header to. And the option is called action. So you just want to copy this. Again, if you look at the helmet frame guard video, this is explained in a lot more detail. And we have um, two options. So we have deny, which just prevents iframing completely. Or we have same origin, which allows um, iframes from the same domain. And it says right here um, from our own pages. So we want to set this to same domain or same origin, sorry. So if we save all of that and then uh, we run this app and wait for it to start up and what I'm going to do here is just open up the uh, developer tools and go into the network tab right here. So um, hang on, problem here. Helmet.frameguard is not a function. Um, okay, sorry, my bad. There needs to be no capital G here. There should be a small g. If you save that and run it again, um, you'll hopefully see that it starts listening. There we go. So now what we'll do is if I refresh this now and then we look at the um, network tab and then we look at our apps uh, request, uh, we can see that in the... Uh, Scroll down a little bit. I might have to refresh it a few times for this to become applied. Oh, hang on. If I do MTK and hard reload, we can see that the X frame options right here has been set to same origin. And what that means is that when we try to iframe the site, if it's not from the same domain name, um, it'll get blocked by default and it won't return the site in an iframe. So that's basically the first test completed right there. All right, so test number two says that we shouldn't allow DNS prefetching. And remember that DNS prefetching is basically when the browser collects the IP addresses of all the links in our page. And we just want to disable this just to ensure some extra safety. And the way we can do this once again is if we go into the helmet um, GitHub page, we can use helmet's a DNS prefetch control middleware to do this. So it's this one right here. And it basically sets this header called xDNS prefetch control, which basically tells the browser how to handle DNS prefetching. So you just want to copy this method right here. And what you want to do is again, you want to mount this for all routes. So we'll say app.use and it's helmet.dns prefetch control like this. And inside it, you give a configuration object once again. And this it's, it's basically saying um, it's called allow the option that you set and you can either set it to um, uh, false or true and true basically sets this um, header to on which means it allows DNS prefetching but if we set this to false it basically turns this it sets this header to off which tells the browser not to prefetch uh, DNS IP addresses so if we start this up again now and uh, what I'm going to do again is just do MTK and hard reload. And if we look at our app now, uh, we can see that the xDNS prefetch control header has been set to off. And basically this means that the browser will no longer be um, storing and prefetching DNS IP addresses for the links on our page right there. So that's basically test two completed now. All right, so test number three says that only allow your site to send refer to your own pages. And this refer stuff wasn't actually covered anywhere in the curriculum, but I'll briefly talk about what it means. So if I just put a link inside one of my pages to a YouTube video, for example, like this, and we have the link right here. And if we look at the network tab and we click on this link, um, the, the, the user is redirected to YouTube, okay. And if we were to just look at the uh, first request right here, and um, we, I don't, I wanna stop this if it loads so I don't get a copyright strike, but uh, if we if we look at this uh, header right here, and then if we go into the request header, and 
uh, we go down here, we can see that there's a refer header right here and it contains the address of our site. So the refer header basically says where the user just came from. And this means that YouTube is basically able to track our user's history despite them not being on YouTube. And we just want to make sure that this refer header is only available when the user is navigating between our pages. So what we want to do um, is we want to mount a helmet middleware in server.js and the middleware that we're going to be setting is called refer policy. So if I just pull up the helmet uh, github page again and we go into um, middlewares right here and we want to basically use uh, this one right here, refer a policy. And we want to mount this for all routes. So we'll say app.use and it's called helmet dot and then it's refer a policy like this and there is a capital p this time this is what i one thing i don't like about helmet is they're not very consistent with their capital letters and this also has takes in a configuration object and basically you'll set the policy right here and the policy can take a few options so you can do um uh you can do a bunch of stuff. Um, I think in the spec, you can actually see all the uh, options right here. Yeah, there's a bunch of options. So you can have like no referrer, which removes the header completely. Uh, but we can also have this one called uh, same origin. And the same origin basically means that if the user is navigating to a page in our own site, basically we can allow the uh, referrer header to be there. Otherwise it will get removed. So we can just set this to same origin because this test is asking us for our own pages right here. So if we stop that now and then I reload it and I'll go ahead and reload this. And if we clear this, um, once it loads up and then now if I click on this YouTube video right here, um, I might have to empty the cache actually before I do this, um, but we'll see it right now. So if I click on this, and we go down to request headers. Yeah, we can see that the referrer header has now been removed. So YouTube is unable to track our user and find out that they came from our site now. So that header has gone. And if we also look at another thing, um, if we look at the referrer policy right here, we can see that same origin has been set. And this means that that's why the referrer header was removed right there. And if we also look, go into a page in our own app right here, and uh, if we take a look, again, refer policy, same origin, but this time, uh, or oh, this time we should have seen that the refer header was set. Um, I might have to empty the cache. Uh, if we go into a page in our own site, and then I take a look at this, um, yeah, we can see that the referrer header is available. And this is because this is within our own domain right here. So any pages within our own site, uh, they can see the previous page that the user was on. But any external sites like YouTube, for example, will not be able to see this information. And that's basically third test completed. All right, so since we're using Mongoose, the next thing we're going to be doing is creating some models and schemas for storing our information. And we're going to be modeling the replies and the threads. So these, the, this big thing right here is the thread, and then these are little replies right here. And we're gonna be creating models and schemas of both of them. And we're gonna be storing the uh, reply documents right inside the thread documents. So the first thing we're going to be doing is defining the reply schema. And I'm just going to copy and paste this just to save some time. But the place where you'll define these schemas is once we've connected to our database, we can define them right here. So the first one we have is the reply schema. And if we look at the information that we need to save for each reply, we can just take a look at the example app for this. So the first thing we want to save is the reply's actual text right here. And that's the content of the reply, or in this case, aloha or test or hi. And I've gone with the variable name of text for that. And the reason for that is if we look in index at the form for the new reply, they've gone with text right here. And if we look, use a similar variable names from this, we can just use the request body directly when creating a new instance of a reply model. And the next thing we need is a delete password. And that's this password right here. And this is the password that will be used when creating the reply. And it will also be used to authenticate the deletion of the replies. 
And again, for all that, I've gone with a string and I've said required to true. And the variable name delete underscore password came from um, this part right here, delete password. Um, another thing that we need to store is going to be the um, created on. And the created on is going to be a type of date and the required is going to be true. And that created on date will be used to render these right here and also used to uh, sort our replies from newest to oldest and just set this to a type of date for now um, I'll show you how these get constructed later on and the final thing uh, by the way this variable name it doesn't really matter too much uh, what you use here um, although it might but it definitely works if you use created on underscore like this an annoying thing about this project in general is the fact that the variable names keep changing midway through and it's so inconsistent so we're gonna to have to be f fixing and replacing them a lot anyway the final thing is is reported boolean right here and uh, that's a type boolean and I'm gonna set the required to true um, I'm not gonna default it to false here but I will default it to false when um, a reply gets created so that's all the information that we need to store uh, about each reply and again we don't need to store the thread that it belongs to because we're going to be storing it inside the thread document directly so the next thing to do is define the schema with the information that each thread is going to store so again I'll copy and paste this in and then I'll explain what's in it so if we look at each thread each thread will have some text right here so in this case it's going to be this hello part right here um, so that's this again a type string required true the text the test the thread uh, so uh, thread also has a delete password right here and that will be used when creating the thread and also to authenticate the deletion and again that's a type string required true we also have to store the board that the um the thread belongs to so for example this board right here is the general board but we also have other boards as well so we'll have um, we have we can create as many boards as we want so we can have a test board for example and the way you switch boards is you just change the board in the URL right here so now we're working inside the uh, test board and we're not going to be storing the documents for the board but what I'm instead going to be doing is with each thread document I'm just going to store a string with the name of the board that it belongs to we also have the created on, which is a type date and required true. And then there's another date in the thread schema, and that's going to be the bumped on. And if we look down here, um, the bumped on right here. And bumped on basically is a date, and it basically is like the last modified date of the thread. So anytime a reply gets added to the thread, um, what we're going to be doing is updating the uh, bumped on field. So I'll show you, for example, if I add in a, a reply right here and um, my reply is right here, the bumped on date will be updated based on the um, uh, based on this the time that this reply was posted or when this thread was modified. And that will be used when sorting the threads by most recent. Uh, reported is, again, it's a boolean, which is true or false, and by default, we'll set that to false when creating a new thread. And finally, we have replies, and the replies is just going to be an array of reply documents. And the way we can do that is if we put these square brackets here, and then give the name of the schema, we're basically telling it that the replies will be an array of documents that correspond to this schema right here. Now, the next thing to do is just to create the models for these, and I'm just going to, again, copy and paste these, but... Uh, I'll explain what's happening. So we have uh, a model for the reply and a model for the thread and we can do that with the mongoose.model method and then we give the name of the model right here. So this is the mongoose name and this is the JavaScript name and then we give it the schema to use and this will basically create a reply model that corresponds to the schema right here. And we've done the same thing to create a thread model that corresponds to this thread schema right here. So now that we have our models and schema set up, we can now use these models to instantiate new objects and then save them to the database. And that's what we'll be doing now. All right, so now we're on to test four, and this is the part where it starts to get quite tough. And what it says is that I can post a thread to a specific message board by passing text delete password. And this isn't actually like this, it should be delete underscore password. 
to API slash thread slash and then the name of a board. And then what it should do is rec redirect to the board page. But we're actually going to redirect it to the thread page because I think that makes a bit more different, this bit more sense. And then we also have to set all of these fields in the database. And the way we're going to be doing that is by setting up a post route for this route right here. And the first thing I'm just going to do is um, just comment these out because we're just going to be writing out our routes individually. So the first thing we want to do is set up a post route and we'll say apt or post. And the post route that we want to be setting up is for a slash API slash threads slash board like this. So that's a route right here. And uh, what that's the first argument. Um, we don't actually have to provide the body parser because if you look at uh, package.json, you should see that body parser is already installed in the boilerplate. And in server.js, uh, we can see that uh, body parser has been mounted uh, for all routes by default. So we don't have to mount the body parser middleware right here. So the next thing you want to do is you want to set up our own function right here, which takes in a request and a response. Uh, I have no idea why that started running for some reason. So you want to set up a request and a response right here. And what I'm just going to be doing for now is just going to log the request body. So I'll say console.log request body just to see the information that we are working with. And then we're just going to do return. So if I run this right now, um, the way you can test this route uh, is if you go to, um, I don't know if this is going to have issues again or not. Nope, it seems to be working. So if you just go to your home page, uh, you can use this testing form right here. And let's say that we want to post to the test board. So again, the test board is a slash b slash test. So we want to post something to this board right here. And um, what you can do is just put the name of the board in here like this, the thread. So I'll say thread one, for example, and the password to delete, I'll just put pass like this. And then if I click submit, what this will do, it will post to this root right here. And if I just submit that, um, we can see that we have the request body with all our details available right there. I'm just going to stop this for now. And um, so we have the request body right here. And what we can essentially do is we can say let a uh, new thread equals, and then we can say new thread like this. And a mongoose model can be used as a constructor like this. And inside it, we give an object with the properties that we want to set. And we can just pass along the request body um, because this already contains the uh, board field, which is this part right here, um, this right here. We have the text field and the delete password. So all of these can be obtained straight from the request body. So it'll basically create an object with all of these set from the request body. So let's do that. One other thing I want to do is just in case the board wasn't provided by a form, uh, we just want to set it from the request parameter since this posts to slash API slash thread slash test uh, from this board part right here, we can also get the uh, board. So what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to say if the uh, board doesn't exist, if the board field hasn't been set already from the request body, we just want to set it to uh, the board from the request parameters, which is this right here. Now we're still missing some information from this. So now we have to set the, these fields right here. So I'll say new thread dot, uh, I'm just going to stop this for now, new thread dot uh, created on. And what we want to do is, since this is a date, uh, we need to pass along a UTC string for this. So what I'm just going to do here is uh, use the new date method to create a new date object with the current date. And then if I call it to UTC string method, we'll get a UTC string. And when we have a type uh, date like this, uh, like this, what we need to do is give it a UTC string. So that's what I've done right here. The other field that we also want to set is the bumped on field. And again, we just want to set this to the current date for now. So again, we can say new date uh, dot to UTC string. And finally, uh, we want to set the reported Boolean and we'll just set that here. So we'll say new thread dot reported. And I'm just going to set that to false for now. And uh, we don't have to do this right here, but I'm just to be safe. I'm also going to be setting the replies field to an empty array. And then well, I'm just going to console.log new thread just to take a look at it. 
and return. So this is still not complete yet, by the way. Um, we'll be we need still need to save it to the database, but we'll just have a look for now at what we are working with. So if I refresh this now, and then if I go for the test board and I put thread one, and the password to delete, I'm just going to put pass for now and then submit it. Uh, we can see that we have our thread document right here and since we're using a mongoose model the id has been added for us so we don't have to worry about that we have test uh, we have thread one we have pass which is our password empty replies array created on and bumped on dates and we have reported false so we basically have a thread document with all this information now and we're ready to save it to the database so what we want to do now is we want to attempt to save this to the database. So what I'm going to say here is say a new thread and we can call the save method, which is a mongoose method. And inside this, you will give it a callback function and this will save it to the database and then run the callback function. The callback function will take in an error and the data, which in this case is a saved thread. And we want to make sure that there's no error. So if there was no error, and the thread was saved okay. So if there was no error and save thread exists, what we want to do is um, redirect them to the uh, threads page. So we can say response dot redirect, redirect like this. And we want to make sure we return this as well because otherwise the test suite will um, have issues. And I'm just going to put the URL in right here and I'll just explain that really quickly. So um, to go to any threads page, basically, what we have is the URL slash B slash, and then we have the board, which is general or test or whatever. So we have slash B slash, and then the board field of the saved thread. So in this case, this is test. So we can just input that from here. And then we have another slash, and then we have the ID of the thread. And that will be the use, the page that will basically display the thread. So we have slash b slash and then the board which is test slash and then the id of the thread which is this right here. So again what this will do is it will save it to the database and if it was successful and um, the user will be redirected to the threads page. And nothing will happen for now because we don't have that root set up but it should save to the database. So let's run that now and uh, let's try this out. So. Uh, once it loads up eventually. Uh, so I, what I can do is I can do test thread one pass and then if I submit this we can see that we've been redirected to slash b slash test and then the uh, id of thread. And if we go ahead and look at our uh, anonymous message board database we should see that mongoose should have created a collection in it called threads. Um, don't know why this is being so slow. Yeah, we have a threads collection right here. And inside this, we have the document for our thread with all our information right here. And we should also be able to do this from the front end. So if we go to the page for any particular board, we can submit a thread right here. And this should have been implemented already. Um, so again, this should send a request to slash um, API slash thread slash board with all this de these details. And once again, we've been redirected to the threads page. And if I go ahead and refresh this, we can see that the second thread has also been created right here. So we can now create threads using our API routes. So the next thing we want to do is basically set up some functional tests for this. And again, the tests are in uh, tests and then to underscore functional test.js. And throughout these functional tests, uh, what we're essentially going to be doing is we're going to be creating a thread. We're going to be adding some replies to it. And then we're going to be doing some bunch of stuff in it, like reporting it, for example, and stuff like that. And then we'll delete it off at the end. So, so to make sure that we're working with the same thread, the first thing I'm going to be doing is having a bunch of variables just to store some information. So we'll need to store the ID of the thread and the ID of the reply just so we can manipulate it later. And then the password that we're going to be using for our thread. And don't worry about this, this will all make sense once we start writing the test. So the first test that we want to write is to create a new thread. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and I'll explain it. Again, I removed most of the stuff from this. So we just have suit functional tests right here. And um, I might have to push this to the right a little bit. There we go. So what this does is, again, we have chai imported chai HTTP. And we'll make a post request to API slash threads, which is um, 
this right here. And instead of the board, we're just going to be doing the uh, test board right here. And then we'll send along board test, uh, functional test thread, and delete password, which is this uh, test pass right here. And then what we'll do is we'll get the response back and we'll set, we'll check that we have a response status of 200. So if we were successfully redirected, the response status right here should be set to 200. So that's essentially what we're testing for right here, that we've been redirected properly to the threads page. And what we're also going to be doing is basically uh, splitting the URL and this will basically just grab this uh, thread ID from the URL right here. So it splits it by slash and then it just gets the last element. And then we've just saved that to this variable right here. So we have the threads ID for later and that's it. So all this test basically does is creates a new thread and checks that we've been redirected with the status of 200 and we just saved the threads um, ID from here right here to a variable that we can use later. So yeah, that's basically test uh, four completed. Again, it was very long, but hopefully you understood everything and now we can create uh, threads in our database. All right, so test five is quite similar to test four, but what it says instead is that we can post a reply to a specific thread by giving the text a delete password, but also the thread ID this time. And again, it's going to be, uh, actually, it's going to be the API slash reply slash board this time. So what we want to do is set up a post route for this. So we want to say app.post. And this time we're going to be using this route right here. So API slash reply slash board. And once again, body parser is installed, so we don't need to mount it. And we just want to take in a request and a response into this callback function right here. So basically, uh, the way we can do this is if I um, run this, and then we just go to the uh, home page of our app, this uh, root, uh, this post root slash API slash reply slash board will basically take in um, a board although you can just get that from the parameters right here a threads id a threads text and then the password to delete that so the first thing we want to do here is basically um, create a new reply so i'll say let new reply equals and then we can say new and then reply right here since we can use this reply model as a constructor and what we want to do here is just give the request body right here. And again, remember that the request body will already contain the text, the delete, and the, the text and the delete password. And we just need to add the created on unreported fields to this. So what we want to do is say new reply dot created on. And we just want to again set this to a new date uh, dot and then to UTC string right here. And we also want to set the new replies um, uh, reported boolean to false as well. So we want to set reported equals false. And let's just take a look at this uh, new reply right here. So we want to just have a look at this. So we'll say console.log new reply. So if we stop that and then I restart this. Um, and let's refresh this and if we go were to put a new reply in so let's do it for this thread one right here so i'll just copy this uh, id of thread and remember that thread one is in the test board so we want to say test right here put this thread id in um the thread text i'll just say uh that should be reply text it shouldn't be thread text but you know we'll just put that in so we'll say reply one like this password to delete i'm just going to put pass and if i submit that uh, right now nothing should happen but if we take a look at the uh, console we can see that we've got a reply object created right here and we have the id the text the delete password created on and reported right here. So we have all the fields that we need for our reply. And uh, the thread ID field is also provided here, but since we're using a mongoose model, it automatically removed that field because it's not relevant as per the schema right here. So now we have the uh, reply document ready to save to the database. So what we want to do is basically push this to the replies array for that thread. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and I'll explain what's happening here. 
So on the thread model, we want to call the find by ID and update since we're going to be updating a thread document. And the first argument for this is going to be the ID of the thread that we want to update, or in this case, this ID right here. And since we've supplied this right here, when we're doing our form, it'll be available in the request body. So we can just get the thread ID from the request.body.thread ID like this. Then in the second uh, argument, this is the object with the properties that we want to set. And what we want to set is we want to use the push operator right here. And in the push operator, we can give an object. And the key to the object is the array that we want to push to, which is the uh, replies array right here. And the value of that is going to be what we want to push to it. And the, what we want to push to the replies array, it's this new reply document that we created right here. And this will be accepted because it corresponds to this reply schema right here, which this does. And then we also want to do is we want to set the bumped on field to a new date with the UTC string. And this will set it to the current date as a UTC string. So again, we'll push this reply to the replies array, and then we'll set the bumped on field to the current date as a UTC string. The third argument to this uh, find by ID and update is an options object and we just want to set new to true here and what that basically does is it makes sure that we get the updated thread back rather than the old thread and finally we have a callback function which takes in an error and the data this time is the updated thread and if there was no error and the updated thread exists what we just basically want to do is once again we want to um, redirect to the threads page right here so that's slash b slash and then the board of the thread and then a slash and then the ID of the thread and one thing I also added in here is I've added this query part right here where I say new underscore reply underscore ID and then I've just put the ID of the new reply which is this part right here and this isn't needed and it, it won't do anything and um, it will still re redirect to the thread page but the reason I added this is that we need a way of giving the reply ID back to the test suite when we're running the testing. And this is the only way I can think of doing it, which just give it along the, give it with the URL. So that's what, that's why I've added this right here. So again, what this will do is it will create a new reply document from the request body, and then it will update the thread with the ID from the request body, and it will push this to the replies array. It will update the bump down to the current date. And then if everything went okay, what it will do is it will redirect to the threads page, um, and it will just have this query as well in the URL. So let's try all of that out. So if I run this now, and we have this test uh, board right here. We have this thread ID, we have this reply one, and then we have the password right here. And uh, once the server is started, if I submit this, we should see that we've been redirected to the threads page right here. Then we have the new reply ID, and then we have the ID of the reply. But most importantly, uh, if we were to go ahead and refresh the database, what we should see is that in thread one, in the replies array, we have our reply right here. So the reply has successfully been posted to the thread. And we can also see that the bumped on field has been updated and it's showing a different time now to the created on. And it's basically the time that we posted this reply right there. So the bumped on will always update with the last, the, with the most recent time that a reply has been posted. Um, one final thing that we need to do is if we want to make the uh, front end functional where we need to uh, where we can add uh, replies from the um, from either the board page or the thread page uh, one small tweak that we need to make is basically uh, if we go into uh, board.html what we want to do is at this is an error in the front end. Again, you won't see the results of this until this is all finished. But if we go to line um, 68 here, so if we scroll down a little bit, uh, line 68 or 69 right here. Uh, after the current board part right here, there's this slash right here. And you just want to make sure that you remove this slash as well. So um, right here, just remove this part right here. There we go. So, and that should make the front end functional. Again, don't worry about it for now, but you'll see how it works later. Um, and finally, what we're going to be doing is writing out a functional test for this. So let's do that as well.
So uh, just go back to functional tests. And then we're going to stop this again first. And then we're going to add in a new functional test right here under our previous one. And what this will do is it will create a child request to slash API slash replies this time rather than uh, threads. And what we're going to be doing is sending along the thread ID. And remember that we called the thread ID from the thread that we just created. So there should be at least one thread available. And we've got the ID for that. So we'll give the thread ID here. Then we'll set the text, which is just a test reply from functional test. Again, the delete password, we'll just use the same password right here. And what we're essentially checking for is that once a thread has been posted, um, we're checking that the um, the redirect was successful to um, to 200. I know this one says 302, but that's because it's caching this right here. But anytime Chai runs it, it will be 200 because Chai doesn't use any caching. So we want to check that the uh, status of the redirect was 200. And again, remember that the redirect should only happen um, if we go into api.js again, the redirection should only happen once the thread has been updated in the database correctly and the reply has been posted. So we check that that's okay. And then again, what we're going to be doing is basically we're going to be splitting the URL by equals this time, and then we'll take the last element from that. So the first element is going to be this part. The last element is going to be this part. So we'll just take that element and we just want to extract the reply ID from here. And then I've just stored it to this test reply ID variable just so we can have access to that reply later and then call done. So basically, again, what this does is it creates a new reply in the test thread using the ID that we captured earlier. It checks if we have successful redirect and then it grabs the replies ID from the URL and it saves it. And that's basically the second functional test. So now that we can post uh, replies to our threads in the database, that's basically test five completed right there. All right, so now we're on to test six. And what it says is that I can get an array of the most recent 10 bumped threads on the board and with only the three most recent replies on each of them. And we also have to make sure that the reported and delete password fields are not sent to the client. So let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is set up a get root for slash API slash thread slash board. So let's do that first. So we want to say app.get and we just want to set up this root right here. And again, we want to give a callback function with a request and a response right here. It's not a callback, a middleware, sorry. So the first thing we want to do is basically recover or we want to find the threads. And the way we can do that is by calling the uh, find method on the thread model inside this. So we can say thread.find like this. And inside of it, uh, we want to basically make sure that we find all the threads from this current board right here. And um, we can get the uh, board from the request parameters right here. For example, if we do slash API slash thread slash test, we know that the board is test. Or if it's slash thread slash general, we know the board is general. So what we want to do is find all the threads where this board field right here is equal to the board from the request parameters. So we can say board equals request dot params dot board like this. And we're not going to give a callback function here straight away because we're going to be filtering our results by chaining some methods together here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is sort these. So we can say dot sort here. And what we want to sort by is it says here that we want the most recent 10 bumped threads right here. So we want to do most recent bumped. So what we want to do inside the sort is we want to basically give an object and we want to have the key as bumped on and we want the value to be a string saying desc or descending so this will basically sort our documents or our results by bumped on in descending order and it is bumped on a date but mongoose knows how to handle and um, sort by date so it's all right here the next thing that we want to do is basically since it's asking for the most recent 10, we want to make sure that we limit this to 10 results. So we want to call the limit method here and then we want to give 10 and this will limit to, to 10 most recent threads. Then we want to remove the um, 
delete the reported and delete password fields. So we want to call the dot select method on this. And we want to basically remove the delete password. So delete underscore password. And we also want to remove the reported field right here. And if we give a string with minus deleted underscore password and minus deleted minus reported, what this will basically do is remove those fields from the documents that are returned. And we don't want to send these out to the client. Then I'm going to call a method called a dot lean. And I'll briefly explain what this means. By default, when we call a mongoose method and we get back the document objects, those document objects have this property that basically it's called extensible and it basically sets it so that we can't extend or change the size of those documents since we need to save them back to the database. And the problem with this is that there's a field in the front end called the reply count, which contains a number of replies. And we're not allowed to basically set external fields because that will increase the size of the objects. And we can't do that when we have a mongoose document. And what the dot lean basically does is it, instead of returning these mongoose documents, it returns them as JavaScript objects, which are extensible. So we can increase the size of them. So again, um, you'll see why we need this later when we're setting the reply count field. But for now, just call the lean method here. And finally, we want to call the execute method. And we want to give the callback function of what to do once it's been executed. I'm going to stop this now. Um, so what we'll get back is we'll get back a a callback function with an error and the data this time will be an array of thread documents. So I'm going to call this array of threads. And what we want to do in here is we want to say if there wasn't an error and the array of threads exists. And what I'm going to do for now is just do console.log array of threads just so we can have a look at it and then I'm going to return right here. So let's run that now. And um, I don't think we can run the get root slash right here. Actually, we can. We can just do it through our address bar. So let's fetch all the um, the all the threads for the test board and see what happens. So to do this, we can make it get request to slash API slash threads. And we can set the board to test like this. Whoops, that should be test. There we go. Um, and what we'll see is I'm going to stop this and stop this. Um, what we'll have is we have basically we have the array of all the threads right here. Um, or we should have the array of all the threads. Hmm. Oh, it's because I put I put the wrong board name in here. I put test rather than test by accident here. That's why. Um, yeah, we should have an array of the threads. So now that we have this array of objects, let's see what else we need to do with it. We can't return it like this. By the way, this should be limited to 10 and it should automatically be sorted by um, descending and bumped on. And we can see that the reported and um, uh, delete password fields are missing from this. So that's okay. So now what we need to do is, since it says here that we need the three most recent replies, we also have to sort the replies by date. And we can do this with um, an array sort right here. So let's copy that and paste it into here. And what this will do is, it will do for the, actually what we want to do is we want to do this for each thread. So once we have this array of threads, what we can do here is say array of threads, dot for each and for each thread we can define what we want to do for each thread and remember each thread is just a doc thread document and what we want to do for each thread is we want to first sort the replies by date and what this will do is basically for the replies uh, array of the thread which is this part right here it will basically um, sort them by created on date right here. So this basically means that we will basically subtract the dates of two threads from each other and it will basically sort them with the threads with the most um, or the highest or the most recent um, created on will come first. That's what this basically does. The next thing we want to do is make sure that we uh, limit this to uh, just the most three replies right here. And the way we can do that is by using a simple array slice method on the replies array. So we want to slice the replies array 
with 0 and 3. So that will basically return index 0, 1, and 2. So that's basically three replies right there. The next thing we want to do is we want to basically set the uh, delete password and the reported field of the replies. Um, we want to basically remove those fields because it says that they should be they won't be sent to the client. So what we want to do is for each we want to iterate through the replies for each thread, and then for each reply, what we want to do is we want to set the delete password fields to undefined, and we also want to set um, the uh, reported field to undefined as well. And if we set these to undefined, that will basically remove them. Um, you can use delete operators and stuff, but they're not very good for performance. So it's, it's easier just to set them to undefined. And finally, what we want to do is, once we've done this, and um, once we've looked through each um, each thread and we've processed all the replies, so after this uh, for each loop has finished, what we then want to do is return response.json, and we just want to return the array of threads right here. So now that we've done all that, let's run this. And if I go ahead and um, reload this, what we'll see is that we have the threads being returned right here. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, everything looks okay. Um, one final thing that we're going to be doing is actually I'll just show you with this right here. So if we go to um, slash b slash test right here. So if we go to slash b slash and then any of the root names right here, what this will do is it will also run a get. It will run the get request and it will basically display all of this, um, all of the threads in here like this. And you'll notice that we have a few undefined fields that we need to fix. And this is basically issues with the um, bo with the board.html page. So let's f fix those now. So if we go to board.html, uh, the first thing that we want to do is these undefined fields right here are the created on fields. And the problem with this is that the created on is written as created underscore on. And inside our um, response, it comes as created on underscore. So we want to do a find and replace here. So just do, oops, don't know what I pressed there. Um, I think it's command H, no. It might be control H, no. Um, One second. It should be command H. Hmm. Basically, what you just want to do is you just want to run a find and replace on this and you just want to replace the created on part here with like created underscore created on underscore like this or however you saved it in your database and um, this part right here as well. And then we also want to do this for the again, this will be very quick uh, if if I were to do this with the find and replace, but for some reason the find and replace isn't working for me. So hopefully I've replaced those myself. So if I reload this now, we should see that the times have been outputted right here. The other thing here is that we have we have this saying undefined replies total, undefined hidden. And these are calculated using a field in the response called the reply count, which they never asked us to set for some reason. But uh, if we have a look here, see it's looking for a field called the reply count. So we want to make sure that we set that up in our response as well. So if we go to api.js, um, where we have this part right here, we want to set the re reply count field as well. So we want to set say thread and then we want to set a count called reply count a field called reply count and we just want to set this to thread dot replies dot length so this is just the total number of replies so if we stop this and then we reload this we should see that the number of total replies shows here and then the number of hidden replies also shows here as well um, one other thing that we want to do is 
if we go to board.html um, and we look at this part right here where it says current board equals what this will basically do is it will slice off this slash right here so it, it will basically post to the test board but the issue with this is the fact that if we were to do this right here um, it shows a completely different board and it will slice off this part and that's why the test part here is showing and you just want there's there are lots of errors in this front end that we need to fix but um i'll just show you what you need to uh, replace here so if i scroll down a little bit just replace this and just go to the written guide that i have here and just replace this part with this so what this essentially does is if if by default it doesn't take off the slash but if the last character was a slash it will take off the slash as well so Again, yeah, it just looks, check if the last character is a slash, and if that's the case, it will just remove the slash. So if I go to test now, um, we should see that the test is actually loading rather than test. And if I do that now as well, we can see that this loads up. Again, this was an error with the, um, with the, with the board.html. And that should be everything now. So we can now view the 10 most recent threads here. And we can also see the three most recent replies. And as you can see, there are four replies in total. And one of them has been hidden away. If I were to post a new reply here, and I'll just call this recent reply. I'm not sure if these work yet, by the way. But if I submit that, and then I go back to the board page, we should see that my recent reply has came up here and then now two replies have been hidden away. So we know all of this is working. So the final thing that we need to do is basically set up a functional test for this. So just go to uh, functional tests.js and we want to create, we want to do a new test here. So again, I'll copy and paste this and I'll explain what's going on. So what this is doing is it will make a get request slash API slash thread slash test. So it'll be doing slash API slash thread slash test like this. And what it's then doing is it's basically checking if the response body is an array because we want an array of threads and we have an array right here. And then it, what it's doing is it checks, it, it takes the first thread as the, uh, the zeroth element or the element of the first index so it takes the first thread here and then what it does is it checks that the delete password field is undefined because remember that we shouldn't be returning the delete password and then it also checks that the replies dot length which is the replies array and the length of that is at most three so remember that we should only have three most recent replies so we should, we're making sure that the replies is at most three another thing that we can actually check here is we can say assert dot is at most and we can check that the response body which is the array of all the threads is at most 10 as well because remember we're not supposed to be returning more than 10 boards but anyway yeah that's what this does it basically runs the get request and then checks a few properties of that so now that we can re return the uh, threads and the replies on a board and um, that's basically this test test six completed right there all right, so now we're on to test seven, and what it says is that I can get an entire thread with all of its replies by going to the root slash API slash reply slash board and giving a query with the thread ID. And it should also hide the um, deleted and reported fields as well. So this time we want to get all the replies for a particular thread. So the first thing to do for this is to set up a get root for this. So what we want to do here is say, oops, this is the wrong file go to api.js and what we want to do here is say app.get and this time it's going to be slash api slash reply slash board which is this root right here and remember that they said that they're going to be giving a query with the thread underscore id part right here so we don't have to worry about program programming that in but that will be available from the request query and then we want to give a middleware function with a request and response right here. And again, the root will look something like this. So we'll have slash API slash replies a slash test, and then we'll have thread underscore ID equals. And then we'll have, um, let's take this one, 
we'll have a thread ID that looks like this. And this is the kind of route that we're going to be programming. So the first thing we want to do is recover the thread document from the database. So to do this, we can say thread.findById. And the first argument to this method is the ID of the thread. And remember that we're giving the ID of the thread in the request query right here with thread underscore ID. So what we can say here is the ID, we can get that from the request dot query dot thread underscore ID like this. And the next argument to this is a callback function which takes in the error and then the thread document that's been returned from the database. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that we don't have an error. So if no error and the thread document has, exists and has been returned. And the first thing we want to do is basically remove the uh, delete password field and the reported field because we don't want to re return these to the user. So we want to say thread.delete password and thread.reported and we want to set both of them to undefined. Um, then what we want to do is basically we want to do exactly what we did before. We want to basically um, do all the work that we did with the reply. So I'm just going to copy and paste this part right here. So in, remember that we had a for each loop for each thread here, so we can just copy it from here. So again, I'll just quickly run through what's happening here. So uh, we have, um, we said the reply count, although we don't really need that for this one right here, because um, I don't think that gets displayed in the thing, but I'll leave it for now. We'll sort the replies by date again. Um, again, remember that we have a thread document here, so we're doing it for the thread replies. Uh, we'll limit the replies to three, and then we'll remove the delete password and the reported fields from the uh, reply. And once we've done that part right here, what we can then do is say uh, return uh, response.json, and we can just return the thread back. And yeah, that should be everything that we need to do. So again, what this does is we'll use find by ID to find the thread document uh, and retrieve it using this uh, thread ID from the request query. Then we'll set the delete password and report it to undefined. We'll set the reply count field, although that's not really needed for this one. Then we'll sort the replies by created on date. We'll limit the replies to three. And then we'll set the delete password and a reported field of each reply to undefined. And finally, we'll uh, JSON that thread back. So let's run this and have a look. So again, we have API slash reply slash test, and then we have question mark thread ID right here. So yeah, let's let's wait for this to start. Okay, it's listening now. So if I refresh this now, we can see that this um, thread one right here has been returned to us, and if we take a look at this, we have this right here and we have this time, um, actually we shouldn't be, one mistake I've just spotted here is, we shouldn't be limiting the reply to three this time, we're supposed to be returning all the replies. So let's try that again. Again, remember that this is asking for all of its replies, so we shouldn't be limiting it to three. So let's reload this and have a look. Uh, now we have the object right here and we have replies right here so we have this um i might have to do this okay there we go no oh my bad i was looking at the wrong route the whole time it should be um slash api slash replies slash test question mark thread ID equals and then the ID from the thread my bad okay so if we look at this now finally we have the thread document back we have all the replies um deleted and uh, delete password and reported are missing and then from each of the threads they're missing as well the replies are still sorted by most recent but we do have all of them this time and uh, so yeah, we know that the root is working now. So now it's time to just look at the front end. And this root is called um, in the front end when you go to a threads page. So let's go here. So we can see, we can click this and see the full thread page here. And that will redirect to the threads page right here. And we can see that this 
uh, the threads with all of its replies has been loaded because we just called this front end will call that get request and render this thread right here. Um, again, we have to make sure that we um, replace the created on fields. So just go to thread.html. And what we want to do here is where it says created underscore on just changes to created on. Or if you didn't change the variable name, you should be fine here. So if I save that now and I go ahead and reload this again, we can see that the created on field has also been added now. Um, let's see if there's anything else we need to do. Um, I don't think we need to do that actually, so that should be okay. Um, so let's go down. Yeah, that should be everything we need to do. So now we can we can go to any threads page right here and we can see all the replies from that thread and all the information. We can also submit a new reply here as well. Hopefully this works. And yeah, we can see that new replies get posted as well. So this is the front end and we have the thread page working now. The final thing that we have to do is basically do a functional test for this. So let's copy and paste that and I'll explain what's going on. So go to functional tests and what this test does is it basically runs the slash API slash reply slash test. And then as the in the query, it'll give the thread ID, which is the ID of the thread that we created at the start. And then what we'll do is we will basically check if the threads ID field matches the thread ID that we queried. We'll check that the uh, delete password field is undefined. And then we'll check that we have an array of replies. And you can do as many tests here as you want, but I've just tested a few basic properties. And this will basically just run the get root and then check that we have the thread with it, all of its replies returned. So yeah, that's a functional test completed now. And that should be a test, um, I think it was seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, completed. And we can now get a thread with all of its replies. So test number eight says that I can delete a thread completely if I send a delete request to APS threads board and pass along the thread ID and the delete password. And then we should either get back incorrect password or success. So let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is set up the delete route. So go to api.js and um, down here, let's set up a delete route. So it's app.delete and the root is for slash API slash threads and then the name of a board like this. And again, we want to put a middleware here with request and response. All right, so let's, let's think about how we're going to be doing this. So we're going to be getting a thread ID and the delete password. Um, again, this is the wrong variable name. It will be thread underscore ID and delete underscore password. This project generally has so many mistakes in it. Um, so once we get those, what we're firstly going to do is we're going to find the thread using its ID. Then we're going to check that the delete password matches the delete password of the thread. And finally, we're going to remove the thread. So let's do the first step now. So let's find the thread. So what we want to do is say thread.find by ID. And the first argument is going to be the ID of the thread. And we can get this from the request body. So this is going to be request.body.thread underscore ID. And the second argument to this is going to be the um, callback function. So we're going to say error. And then this time it will return a thread document, but I'm going to call this thread to delete because that's essentially the thread document we want to delete. And what we essentially also want to do here is we want to make a check here. So we want to say um, if um, error and so if there wasn't an error and the thread to delete exists. And then inside this, we can try deleting it. What I'm also going to do here is say else return a response json and i'm just going to say something like thread not found because it means that we didn't find the thread with the id to delete so what we want to do in here is we want to compare the um, delete password fields to make sure that they match so what we want to do here is say if 
and thread to delete dot uh, delete underscore password is equal to um, request dot body dot delete password so we want to make sure that the the threads delete password field matches with the request body's delete password field and if that's the case then we want to remove the thread so we can say remove thread dot find by id and remove so this is another mongoose method first argument is the id which again we can give from the request body so request of body dot thread underscore id and the second argument is going to be a callback function that takes in an error and the data this time is we'll get an instance of the deleted thread document back just in case we want to return it to the user or something and all we want to do here is say if there was no error and the thread was deleted and we got the deleted thread returned to us what we want to do is say return a response dot json and we want to return back the success message which is what they asked of us right here and then what we also want to do is um in this if statement if the delete if the um delete passwords don't match so we'll put an else statement in here what we can say is return response dot json and we just want to return back um I think it was incorrect password which is this part right here so let's do that all right so that should be our delete root setup now so let's run the app and find out if it works so what I'm going to do first is just create a new thread for us to delete so I'm just gonna go to the test board again and I'm gonna create a new thread so I'll say thread to delete or something like that again I'll put the same password in so the pass and if I submit that um, yeah we have the thread to delete created and I'm just gonna verify that it's it shows up here but I'm just gonna double check that it's in the database as well just in case um, yeah we have it right here and it's in the test board all right so let's try running the delete route so um, we can do the testing here so we'll go to here and say um, um delete thread this one right here and the board is test the thread id that we want to delete is this one right here so if i just grab this from the um mongodb and if i put that into here and then the password if let's try using an incorrect password first so i'll say password for example and then i submit that we should see that incorrect password comes back and um, this this should be returned this page automatically just displays it but um, we should also see that um, yeah we can see that incorrect password was returned and if I put the correct password in which in this case was pass and then I submit that we can see that success comes up and if I go to slash b slash test again we should see that the thread has now been removed and if we go into here and refresh this as well we should hopefully see that the thread is now gone from the database yes it is i'm going to remove this as well because i don't know why it's there right so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to test this on the front end as well so let's create another thread and set the password here submit that so We'll try deleting it from the thread page first. So if I put in the wrong password here, it should say incorrect password. If I put the correct password in here, um, this should have already been implemented. So yeah, this has been deleted. I know it shows up here, but if we try to run this again, we should see that yeah, we get we doesn't we don't get anything back here because it wasn't found and it's missing again. And I'm also going to try creating and deleting a thread from the board page as well. So we have it created now. So if I try to delete this thread, the ID will be inserted here by default, but if I put in the wrong password, it should say incorrect password. If I put the correct password in, delete it, it should say success. And if I refresh this now, we can see that it's gone. So we have the functionality complete now to be able to delete threads when, when the correct password is provided. So the final thing that we want to do is basically set up a functional test for this. And an important thing to remember here is that we do this functional test right at the very end. So we're going to be putting the rest of our tests before this because we're going to be working with this thread and we're going to end up deleting the thread at the end. So what this will do is it will make a delete request to the root and the thread ID is a thread that we just created at the start right Right here we give the correct password here as well 
Um, and then what it does is it checks that the response body is equal to success, which it should be if the correct password was um, given. Another thing you can try testing here is by giving the wrong password and check for the incorrect password, but I'm not going to bother with that. So yeah, now that we have the functionality to be able to delete threads by giving the ID and a and the password, and we now basically have this test complete. All right, so test nine says that I can delete a post. And by post here, they don't mean like a thread, they mean a reply, which just changes its text to delete it like this instead of removing it. And if I send it, it happens if you send a delete request to API replies board. And you give the threads ID, again, that should be thread underscore ID, the reply ID, which should be reply underscore ID, and delete password as well. And we'll once again get the incorrect password or success. So let's do that. So the first thing we want to do is set up the delete root. So app.delete. And the root that we want to set up is slash API slash reply slash board this time. So last time it was for threads, this time it's for replies. And again, we want to add a middleware function here that takes in a request and a response like this. <coughs> like this. Try that third time. There we go. Right, so what we want to do is we have a thread ID. So the first thing we want to do is find and retrieve the thread. The second thing we want to do is look through each of the replies of that thread. Um, I think I've lost the database now. We want to look through each of the replies and then we want to find the reply that matches the reply ID that we also took in. The final thing we want to do is check the delete password matches and if so, we want to change this text property to deleted. So let's do the first part now and find the thread. So what we want to do here is say thread.find by ID and the first argument for this is the ID of the thread and the ID of the thread, remember, will be in the request body. So we can say request.body.thread underscore ID like this. And the second argument is a callback function. And I'm just going to call this thread thread to um, update because we're going to be updating the thread document by changing the text of the reply. So we also want to make sure that there's no error here. And we did get a thread back like this. And if this is not the case, what we can say is return a response.json. And we want to just JSON back um, something like thread not found. Like this. Okay, so we do have a thread now. So what we want to do now is look through each of the replies of the thread. And I'm going to be using a for loop for this rather than a for each loop. And the reason for that is we have to return if the password is wrong and you can't return from a for each loop. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Actually, you know what? I'll type it out. So I'm going to have an integer i first, which we'll be using for our for loop. And now I'm going to set up a for loop. So I'll copy and paste this part at least. So we want to start at i equals zero. Then we want to go through each of the threads replies and we want to increment i each time. And what we want to check is if the ID of the reply at that index matches the ID of the reply that we took in. So what we want to do here is say if thread to update dot replies, and then we want to check if the ID field like this is equal to um, request dot body dot and then it was reply I underscore ID. So if there, we want to check if the um, if we found the thread that we want to, if we found the reply that we want to delete. And if that's the case, then what we want to do is we want to basically check, um, hang on, this should be I here. Then the next thing we want to do is check if the delete passwords match. So if I copy that and paste that in here, we want to check if the delete password matches the um, requested.body.delete password. Like this. And if it doesn't match, what we want to do is basically return our error message. So we want to say return response dot json and we want to return back incorrect password like this 
And if they do match, what we want to do is basically set the reply text to deleted. So in here, we want to say um, the replies, and then we want to say text is equal to, and then we have to set it to, I think it's deleted with square brackets is what they wanted. So we want to just set that here. So what this will do now is it will look through each of the replies in the thread that we got from the database and it'll find the reply with the ID from our request body. And then what it will do is it will basically check if the delete passwords match. And if that's the case, it will change the text of the reply to delete it like this. Otherwise it will return incorrect password. What we want to do after this, after we've looked through all the replies, is we basically also want to save it to the database. So once we've looked through all the replies and the for loop is finished, we'll have updated our reply by now. What we want to do is we want to say um, thread to update dot save. And inside the save, remember we give a callback function which takes in an error and the data this time is an instance of the updated thread document. And um, I'm not sure if I spelled this correctly. It should be all right. And then what we want to do is say if there was no error and the thread um, was saved successfully, so we have an updated thread document, then what we want to do is return um, response.json. And we want to JSON back success like this. Just going to double check on those. Yeah, that should be okay. So again, what this will do is it will firstly find the thread by the ID, look through all the replies in that thread, find the one that matches the ID of the reply that we took in, check that the delete password fields match. And if that's the case, it will change the text of the um reply to deleted otherwise it will return incorrect password and then it will save the thread back to the database and again because we've returned here if the password was incorrect it won't do any of this stuff right here so let's try running that now and um let's see let's say that we want to delete um this reply from this thread so reply one so let's try deleting that Okay, there we go. So it is saying success now. What happened before was basically my internet went out part way through and this part actually didn't save. So yeah, now it should be working. And if I go back to um, slash b slash uh, test and then go to that threads page, we should see that, yeah, the reply uh, has now been deleted. So yeah, we know that it's working now. And uh, we can also do this through the uh, front end as well. So if I wanted to delete this reply, I would just put the password in here, it says success. And then if I reload it, we should see that it now says deleted right here. So you can just go ahead and delete your replies through the front end or through the test, um, the API test routes. So yeah, that should be everything you, we need to do here. So the final thing that we're going to do is basically just do a quick functional test for this. So let me just scroll down and find it. And you want to make sure that you do this second last. So you want to do it just before you delete off the thread. And what this functional test does is it basically sends the delete request and it gives the thread ID and the reply ID of the thread and the reply that we created earlier and then gives the, del uh, the deletion password as well right here. And then it just checks for the success message. So yeah, that's how you do um, test number, I think we're on nine or 10 now. And yeah, that's essentially everything we need to do to be able to delete any thread we want and set the text to deleted. Sorry, any reply we want. The test number 10 says that I can report a thread and change its reported value, remember that was a boolean, to true by sending a put request to API threads board and pass along the thread ID. So that's what we're going to be doing now. So what we want to do is create a put route for that. So down here, um, wow, we've done a lot of routes today. Um, so we want to do app.put and again this is for API thread this time. So just going to grab that from here and again we want to give a middleware function here that takes in a request and response and as far as i remember um 
let's have a look yeah this is also in the request body and not the query so you were all right so what we want to do here is basically find the thread with the ID from the request body and then set the reported boolean to true. So here what we want to do is say thread dot find by ID and update. And the first argument to this is going to be the ID and the ID will come from the request body. So we want to say request dot body dot thread ID. The second argument to this is what we want to set and we basically just want to set the reported boolean to true. The third argument is going to be an options object and this options object we just want to set new to true because we want the newly updated um, document to be returned. By default it returns the document before modification but we want to make sure that it returns a new document. Then we have a callback function which takes in an error and the updated thread and this one's quite simple compared to the previous ones. All we have to do is say if there was no error and the updated thread document was returned successfully then we just want to say return a response.json and we just want a json back success like this so yeah that should be everything right there so if i started the app now and let's say that i want to report this thread right here so i'm just going to refresh this now so what we want to do is if we just go back to the home page and um, I go down to this one and then put the board in which is test and then I put the ID of the thread in and submit it. Um, hang on, we have a problem. Let's see what's happening. Oh, my bad. Spelling mistake, right. Um, if I change that now and then try this again there we go so if I try and clear this and then if I try and report this thread again we should see that we have um, success returned right here if we look here it also says success and then if I just go ahead and reload this we should see that um, the reported boolean has been set to true so in the future a moderator or someone can know that someone has reported this thread um, another place that we want to set check this from is from the um, front end so let's set this back to false for now and then go to um, the front end so let's go let's try the board page first so if we go to slash b slash test and then we report the thread um, Yeah, that doesn't seem to be doing anything. Um, let's try clearing it. We might have to fix something in the front end. Ah, there we go. It's because for some reason when the front end's been built it says report id rather than thread id for some reason so let's go fix that so go to uh, board.html and just look for the um, thread report button right here there we go and we want to basically change this from report underscore id to thread underscore id again it's a mistake in the um, boilerplate code so then we'll try refreshing that and doing this again so if I refresh that now, and now I try to report it, we should see that it says success, and this also says success right here. And if I go ahead and reload this, what we should see is that, um, uh, we should see that it's been set, the reported Boolean has been set to true. The final place to check this from is the um, thread page. So if I change this back to false, we might need to change this to report ID, thread ID again so let's have a look in here and if we look at the report button yeah we need to change this to thread ID as well so let's restart that and what well, if we click on report now or if I try this again and then click on report we can see it says success and if I go ahead and refresh this the thread has been reported right there. So yeah, that's the report functionality working. So the last thing we're going to be doing is basically um, doing the functional test again. So let's go to, um, if 
functional test.js and we want to do this before our deletion so i'm going to do it just after the reply so if i paste that in what this does is it basically puts in it it basically reports that thread that we created before in the test using the id and this checks for the success message so yeah that's test 9 completed right all right so test number 11 says that i can report a reply and change its reported value to true by sending a put request to api replies so that's what we're going to be doing now so go to api.js and we just want to create a put root like before but this time for the second root so we want to say app.put and this time it's for the api replies root and we want to create request response middleware again Right, so in this one, what they'll give is a thread ID and the reply ID. And the process of reporting a reply is very, very similar to the process of um, deleting a reply. So what I'm just going to do is just copy from the, uh, re the thread delete and then just modify what we need to. So let's copy all of that. And I'm going to paste that in here. So what we essentially do is we'll find the thread by ID using the request body. Then we'll look through each of the replies to find the reply with that ID. And we don't need to check the delete password this time, so I can just remove all of that. And once we find the reply with the reply ID, what we want to say do here is we want to set the reported to true. So I'm just going to copy this, paste this here, and then set the reported boolean to true. And then after that, we'll save the thread and then return the success message if everything went OK. So let's try uh, testing that now. So if I run this and let's say that I want to report um, this reply right here called reply one. So what I'll do is I'll take the reply ID and oh, hang on, we have a problem. Okay, I just fixed it. It was just a few syntax errors. So now what we can do is, if I go to the home page of the app, I'm going to try delete, uh, reporting a reply with the API right here. So what I'm going to do is put the board, which is test. Then I have the reply ID right here. So I'm going to um, put that here. Sorry, I didn't copy that properly. Um, copy and paste here this should the th the board should be up here actually and then the thread id as well so let's copy that and where are we at there we go paste it and if i submit that it says success and then if i go ahead and reload this we should see hopefully that the yeah, reported boolean is true. Let's try reporting this one, this deleted one. Um, I think the, the time created was twelve twenty three. Um, using the, the using the board page. So let's do slash uh, board slash test like this. That should be slash b slash test. My bad. Okay, so it's the one at uh twelve thirty seven. Or actually, let's just report this one, the one with three four that number right there and that's a success as well so if I go ahead and refresh this um, right yeah it's this one right here and we can see that reported is true so it's working in the front end as well so that's basically the, the reply reporting functionality created right there the very final thing we need to do is once again do a unit uh, functional test so i'm going to do this straight after the um the reported thread part just before we um sorry that should be in functional tests just before we go ahead and delete the thread so um oh we delete the reply because we need to report the reply so let's paste this in so what this will just do is it will send a put request to api replies with the reply and thread id and it just checks for a success message so now that we can reply a report threads right there that's the test completed right there so the final test asks you to complete the functional tests and make sure that they pass so 
Um, we've already written out the functional test throughout, but I'm just going to go through them again. So we have variable to store a threads ID, a replies ID, and then we have a password as well. So the first thing it does is it creates a thread with this password in the test board. Then it checks that we were redirected successfully. It takes the threads ID from the redirect URL, and it basically assigns that to this variable. Then what we'll do is we'll post a reply into that thread using the ID that we saved before. And again, we'll get this, give it the same password and everything. And then what we'll do is we'll grab the replies ID from the URL and then assign it to the variable. Then what we'll do is we'll try and get the threads from the, tech, the test board and we'll check that we get 10 threads returned. Um, we check that the delete password fields are missing. We check that only three replies are returned, etc., etc. Then what we'll do is we will try and get all the replies from the thread that we created. And we check that the ID of the thread matches. We check that the delete password field is missing. We check that we have an array of replies. Then we'll try and report the thread using its ID and check for a success message. Then we'll try and report a reply on that thread using its ID and reply ID and check for the success message. So we'll basically report the reply that we created on the thread that we created. Then we'll try and delete that reply from that thread and check for a success message and then we'll try and delete the thread completely and check for a success message. And to do the testing what it says in readme.md is that in your environment variables uh, you want to create an environment variable called node underscore env and you want to set this to test like this. And then what will happen is the next time you start up your app it'll do the testing. So if you just click run now what it will do is it will start doing the functional tests and you can see them running right here. And um, I have one passing, we, I have all of them passing apart from one. And I think it's just something to do with, um, yeah, this line right here. I think there's something wrong with that. I'm just going to come back to that and do it later. But if you do that, um, you should hopefully see that all the tests are passing. If you don't, if they don't pass, it's probably a problem with your tests rather than um, with your um, code. And you can also always use my test um, sh my tests page as well. You should do the exact same thing. So yeah, now we have all those tests passing. So that's the final test completed right there. And we have a fully functional message board. So what I'm going to do now is apply some CSS styling to it to make it look a bit better, and then I'll come back some CSS styling and I've cleaned up the app quite a bit so if we take a look at it now and wait for it to start up there we go so if we have a look now what I've done is I've cleaned up the interface a bit remove the user stories from the main page and I just have the API test right here and then I just have this button called go to general and what that does is it just takes you to the general board. You can still go to the test board or any other board you want by just putting in the URL like this. And we have the form up here to submit a new thread. So what I'm just I'm just copying these from Ask Reddit. So I can just submit a thread like this, put in a password like this, then click submit and we'll be taken to the page of that thread. Then what we can also do is we can just add in a reply like this put a password in and boom, the reply has been added right here. Click this and go back to the general and we have threads coming up right here. And as you can see, all of them just have up to three replies. If there are hidden replies, it says how many replies there are in total and how many are hidden. Then we can click this button to see the full thread like this. If I want to delete one of these replies, what I can do is I can just put in and the password, click on delete, and it will say success. And then if I go ahead and reload that, we can see that it comes up as deleted. If I wanted to report it, I can just click uh, report right here, and it will say success. It won't show anything here because remember the reported doesn't get returned, but it will be uh, reported in our database. And we can look at that in a bit. Um, I can also go back here, and if I wanted to, let's say, delete this thread right here, I can put the password in right here, click on delete, and that will delete the thread, and if I refresh this, we can see that the thread is gone. And what I can also do is I can just copy, um, I can just submit replies straight from here as well, so I can just do that. So everything is working now, the front end is completely working, and um, it's a nicer slightly nicer interface as well and we basically have completed the whole message board project right there 
And what you can now do is you can go ahead and submit that and you can you should see that the tests passed. They should have passed it from the start anyway because there's no testing here. But if you submit that, you can see it's finished and then you can go ahead and move on and that's everything you need to do and you can go and claim that full stack certification now.